Shalom Ya Sharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the few Akwath that's listening in today um, I'm back at you with another in transit lesson entitled the people mourn because the wicked are in authority now um, I'm not gonna you know bring out the Bible app and read precepts off there but what I will do I will quote precepts and uh, roughly paraphrase them to the best of my ability the reason for that is um, you know the beloved brother Bakar Amath from the New York from New York he um, you know he did a, a, a beautiful video basically giving brothers a warning because a lot of us brothers are guilty of that man you know um we pretty much uh, um, when we're doing the work of the Lord a lot of the times we're on the go we're driving you know we're trying to drive bring out precepts and, and you know um, so basically we, we, we're having divided attention and um, you know we're living in, in a, a time of you know great judgment the Lord is about to you know or the Lord not even about to the, the Lord is you know judging the people of the earth and you've got um uh, all sorts of foul wicked demonic spirits you know satan can just jump on the driver in front of you and cause them to break abruptly and you know next thing you know you've rear-ended someone or you know you, you don't want to be in um be placed in an unfortunate situation whilst trying to do the work of the lord you know so um just kindly advise brothers uh who are doing that to you know pretty much put it to a halt so you know um the scriptures say what the wise man the prudent man foreseeth the evil and um you know pretty much hides himself you know and in this situation we we foresee how a bad situation can come out of doing so so you know we we want to take preventative measures to to um reduce the chances of things like that happening man but anyways Back to the title of this video, the people mourn because the wicked are in authority. Um, you know, I was driving to work tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> I was driving to work tomorrow. I was driving to work yesterday, you know, on my way to the plantation field. And, um, you know, I drive past a few schools and stuff. And what I noticed is, is um, the teachers were protesting. Now, this is just one of many protests that, you know, be happening across the world and even here in the UK and um, ultimately it's because the people ain't happy no more man you know Job 20 I believe verse 23 says how every hand of the wicked shall be upon him and he shall be in straits now that word wicked goes to the word aimal which means uh, you know in the Hebrew which means the workers the laborers you know because um the people are not happy man you know people like if you see the signpost here you might not be able to see it well um but, you know they're saying various different things but like, you know they the main cause they seem to have is um the pay you know working too much and the money that they're getting is is is, is, is not matching um the amount of work they're putting in you know people are busting their asses and I, and I bring in home the bare minimum, man. And then you got bills going up, you know. So so you you just about have enough money to make it through the month. Yeah, you, yeah, you know. When you when you um, sit down and you think about how your body feels, you're you're you're, you're all burnt out. You're tired. You're drained. You don't even want to have social interactions with people because you're you're just so um, you know, you've just been working so hard. You just want to pretty much keep yourself to yourself, you know. Then you have those bills that keep going up. So the people are unhappy right now, man. So, um, you know, the people are taking it to the streets. They're making their voices heard. 
you know, which is prophecy, man. You know, Second Ezra nine says, um, um, there shall be uproars, there shall be earthquakes, and uproars of the people, the people going out protesting and striking. That's an example of uproars to the people, man. Uproars of the people, Salaki. So we, these are all tokens. Uh, representing the times that we're living in right now, you know, we are these are the end times, man. You know, when you go to the book of Proverbs 20 29, which is where I got the inspiration of this title, uh, um, Proverbs 29 and 2, roughly paraphrasing, says, um, um, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. So, you know. Ask yourself this question Right now Are the people rejoicing Or are the people mourning That should be a very simple answer The people are mourning man You know They're tired of, of the inflation You know The bills going up Being in overdraft Maxing out the credit cards Not being able to pay off the credit card Having the interest rates rape them You know The people are tired of it man So they're taking it to the streets You know I wish I took a picture of all the other schools that I'd seen protesting But you know um, The thought of taking a picture only came to mind When I'd seen this one I was like okay cool well, I've seen it again Let me take the picture And I'm going to go into it um, It was just the other week I believe last week These weeks be flying by so fast You don't know whether it was last week or two weeks ago But anyways I see um, the, the ambulances were striking man Again, same similar reasons, you know, working strenuous hours, but the pay does not match. You know, so Esau Edom, he's he's on his way out, man. You know, because um, why why is it a problem now? Society's always been run like this. Yeah, I get we have inflation and cost of living crisis and stuff, but we've had many times of where, um, you know, inflation has been a problem and so on and so forth, but. To have the, the um, what's it called? The repercussions to this magnitude has never happened before. But that's because, you know, Esau Edom, he's on his way out, man. Esau Edom's time is, is done. His time for sitting on the throne is coming to an end. And that's why all these prophecies, uproars of the people, earthquakes, judgment, that's why it's all happening, man. All right? Him losing his uh, her, um, his status as being, you know, because Esau, for a long time, he thought it was God. He thought it was he was even greater than God. But the Heavenly Father is showing Esau, Edom, that he's just a mere mortal, man. And, and you know, he's removing that pride of him because, yeah, you know, what does it say in the book of Job? Though he, um, his head reached onto the clouds, you know, he shall fall to the pit like his own dung, roughly paraphrasing, you know. So um, um, Isaiah 14 also uh, speaks of um, It says, um, I believe verse 12 on down is, It says, um, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning You know, basically And then you've got Luke um, Luke 10 and 16 or 17 Where it says, um, I behold Satan as lightning fall from heaven That's talking about how fast Esau Edom is going to fall from his position of rulership, man. You see, because um, it's taken Esau Edom a number of years to get his kingdom to this state, to this stage. Yet in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, he is all going to come to, it's going to be completely obliterated, man. It's going to be completely destroyed. All that effort is going to be um, done away with, man. All right. You know, what does it say in Job 20? When when he is about to fill his belly, then shall the Most High cast the wrath of his fury upon him, man. So, you know, just when Esau Eden thinks he is, um, you know, he's finally established his new world order, he's beaten everyone into submission, now he can just sit back, relax, and just be the so-called God he wants to be, that's when the wrath of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is going to come upon him, man. All right? So, you know, um, all these things happening, our tokens, man, showing you that Esau Edom is on his way out of here. Esau Edom is out of here, man. So what does that mean, brothers and sisters? That means suffer patiently, as it says in Baruch 4 and 25, man. Because we see the signs 
that Esau Edom's kingdom is coming to an end. So if we see that Esau Edom's kingdom is coming to an end, what does that mean for us? Well, the answer is in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. That's what it means for us, man. So if we see Esau Edom's kingdom coming to an end right before our eyes, that means that the kingdom of heaven, right, the kingdom of Yasharala is round the corner, man. And we just need to suffer patiently because, you know, but once we get the kingdom of heaven and we experience the magnitude of it, we're going to be thinking to ourselves, rah. So I only had to endure that to inherit all this. You know, that's what that's 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 the mindset we're gonna be in because you know, as I brought out in my lesson yesterday, um, you either Isaiah 64 and 4 or First Corinthians 2 and 9, they, they pretty much say the same thing. Um, it says, For I have not seen nor ear heard the things which uh, the Lord has prepared for those who wait for him, who love him, man. Alright, so so we just need to suffer patiently, man. Lord willing this be the year. Elder Apostle Taha, he he named this year. The year where all um, the hopeful year where all prophecies will come to pass. All right, so so just just hang in there, man. All right, we're soon home. Okay, all as I said, all of these are tokens of the signs that were, of of the times, man. All right, and you know those who have eyes to see and ears to hear will know what time it is, man. You know, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna bring up for now. Lord willing, uh, this has been edifying. You can look into the scriptures that I quote, that I quoted, you know, for edification's sake. And uh, yeah, man. Um, until the next one, I say shalom.